Welcome to the campfire. Today, we are taking a deep dive into District 196A, otherwise known as the Katy ISD District. The teams in 196A are Katy High, Cinco Ranch, Maid Creek, Morton Ranch, Peyto, Seven Lakes, Taylor, and Tompkins. Let's start off by analyzing these teams in our film session. Katy is always a problem in 196A, and they will be again this year. However, that doesn't mean they don't have some holes to fill. The Tigers' all-time leading rusher, Seth Davis, has moved on, along with quarterback Caleb Coger. What they do have back is some huge offensive linemen, tight end Luke Carter and solid pieces on defense like linebacker Connor Johnsey and defensive end Decaeus Brinkley, who transferred in from Seven Lakes. Tompkins will be the team trying to knock the Tigers off the throne behind playmakers Caleb Blocker and Wyatt Young. The Falcons also have strength on both sides of the line, with D linemen Rotimi Oleyenka and Adua Okunde returning, along with one of the state's best offensive linemen, Ashton Funk. Cinco Ranch finished tied for second last year, but graduation hit them hard as they lost district MVP quarterback Gavin Rutherford. The Cougars do have a strong secondary, led by Tatum Johnson and Superior Hill. Morton Ranch took the fourth playoff spot last year and returned second team all-district receiver Mike Gerald. Jordan, in just their first season in district play, almost made the postseason with players like Zachariah Sample and Andrew Marshback. The Warriors could make the playoffs this year. Peyto lost a lot of their standout defensive players, but cornerback Dejon Petaway and defensive end Logan Thomas will be back to cause havoc. Katie Taylor has highly recruited Ian Flint back as tight end, while Seven Lakes and Maid Creek will try to improve on their one combined district win. Players on the Rise is brought to you by Parker University. Do you or your student want a career training the world's best athletes? Check out our bachelor's degree in strength and human performance today. For an even deeper look at 196A, here's producer Ward Fasold and the Houston Chronicle's John Poorman with the District Breakdown. All right, there's my guy John Poorman. We're talking 196A, District Breakdown time. 196A is usually Katie and then a lot of other solid teams that can make deep playoff runs, but... I tell, and I like Katie this year, too. You know, I'm not stupid, but I also like to see the players coming back on Tompkins. Tompkins looks like they might be able to give them a little run. Could they Could they possibly beat Katie like they did a couple of years back? Yeah, I mean, top to bottom, this district was one of the most competitive and one of the most intriguing districts in the greater Houston area all of last season. Uh, I mean, you know, just going up and down the standings, you know, there were – um, you know, two really good teams in Jordan and Peyto that missed out on the playoffs altogether. Uh, and it really did come down to the last couple of weeks of the regular season. Um, you know, as far as Tompkins giving Katie a run for its money, of course, um, you know, that's the only program that, you know, really has dethroned Katie for a district title in recent years. Uh, certainly the, the Falcons are going to be a factor again, um, if they can compete for the top spot, um, you know, I think that they can. Coach Todd McVay has done an excellent job of building this program. And, uh, you know, they definitely have some uh, key pieces of playmakers coming back. Uh, you know, but going into it, you can never bet against the Katy Tigers. Uh, year in and year out, they are just a complete machine. Um, you know, so I think that they have to be the favorites going in, especially after going 8-0 last year and uh, making it to the state semifinals. So, I think they're the favorites, but there are definitely some teams in this district that can give them uh, a little bit of a test here. I appreciate it. Hey, next week we're going to talk uh, 26A, which I have a feeling you'll make a bold prediction about Rich Point as well. So we'll see how that – we don't know. We'll find out next week, right? Yes, sir. All right, we'll see you next week. We'll post the entire breakdown segment this Wednesday on our social media pages. Now let's take a look at some game changers and our players on the rise presented by Parker University. At Katy Jordan, wide receiver Zacharias Sample was used all over the field for the Warriors. Primarily a wideout, Sample caught 32 passes for almost 600 yards and six scores. However, Zachariah would also play in the defensive backfield where he had 21 tackles, three picks, and returned one of those for six. And in case you thought Sample needed some rest, he also would return kicks and punts. The senior is verbally committed to Arizona State. You won't find a better blocking tight end in the district than Ian Flint of Katie Taylor. 
At 6'4", 245, Flint is a big man to get around in the running game, but that doesn't mean he can't slide open and help out as a big target to throw to as well. Flint caught 10 passes for 129 yards and two scores as a junior. He also caught the eye of several D1 colleges and eventually committed to Nebraska. With the talent Peyto had on defense, Logan Thomas still found a way to make a name for himself as a junior. The edge rusher powered through would-be blockers to tally nine sacks, 43 tackles, and 16 tackles for loss. He made a name for himself during the winter of his junior year when he was named MVP of the National Combine. Logan has verbally committed to Notre Dame. The Katy Tigers got a nice little treat this offseason when defensive end Decaeus Brinkley transferred in from Seven Lakes. Brinkley is versatile, so he can play linebacker as well as defensive end, and he does them both quite well. Decaeus is impossible to block as he wound up with 47 tackles, eight tackles for loss, and two sacks as a junior. Plus, he returned a fumble for a score. Brinkley has offers from Kansas, Kansas State, and Oregon, among others. Players on the Rise is brought to you by Parker University. Check out our bachelor's degree in strength and human performance today. Our Ward Fasola caught up to Katie Jordan head coach Mike Robbie to talk about his Warriors and the rest of 196A in our Media Day segment. All right, it's Media Day. We are talking 196A, and we have the head coach Katie uh, Jordan with us, Mike Robbie. Coach, uh, talk about. Let's start off with last year because you know the year before you played a rogue schedule, waiting to find a home. You found a home, and it was in one of the most powerful districts in the state. And you guys really kind of showed out. I mean, nobody knew what to really expect from you, and you you were battling there. Game number 10 could have gone either way and you would have been in the postseason. Just talk about your feelings going into uh, that season and how the experience is going to push you through in 2023. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it was a, you know, it was a wild start opening up the school, uh, you know, being in the middle of the pandemic, uh, scheduling was, was a nightmare early on. Uh, you know, we got into the the second year, we got into the rogue schedule. Uh, where we got to play uh, a little bit of varsity action, and and that was that was good for our kids. Uh, they got exposed to some some pretty good football. Uh, you know, I know our record wasn't really where we wanted it to be coming out of that year, uh, but the growth uh, over the first two years was really good. So we were excited about uh, the opportunity to get into this district. Uh, you know, I'd coached in it uh, previously uh, at May Creek for five years, and so I, I kind of knew what to expect and what it was going to look like. Uh, we had a great all season. Uh, and I thought our kids performed well last year. You know, our goal going into last year, of course, we wanted to make the playoffs, but we wanted to get into to game 10 with it meaning something. Uh, and we were able to get to that point and, you know, didn't, didn't execute the way we wanted to early in that football game. Uh, kind of got behind the eight ball, finished really strong. Uh, and, and I thought our kids responded well the whole season. So uh, they did a good job with it being their, their first real true varsity experience. We will be definitely keeping an eye on KDISD. We'll have a camera planted at Rhodes and Legacy probably every Thursday and Friday night. So uh, good luck and thank you very much for joining me today, Coach. All right. Thanks for having me. You can catch the entire interview Friday on our social media channels. That's going to do it for this week's campfire. Next week, we will dive into 26A and find out if anyone will challenge Ridgepoint for the crown. Until then, have a great week, everybody.